We've got to disenthrall ourselves. So I, I'm going to start by taking off my button-down shirt, <laughs> which is pretty wild. Does everyone know about 1517? That was the year that uh, Martin Luther posted the 95 theses on the door at Wittenberg and precipitated the Reformation, which in turn triggered the Renaissance. And I believe that all major revolutions are ultimately information revolutions, and that this Renaissance, with its multiplication of books from a few hundred controlled by bishops to millions controlled by the people, was a revolution comparable to the one that we are now undergoing with the development of this efflorescence of cryptography and new forms of enterprise. Now, uh, this all begins with the metaverse. And I would like to read from Munib Ali's uh, thesis, which he contrived with a bunch of his buddies at, at uh, Blackstack, in which is a tremendous uh, work of analysis and a tremendous agenda for change across the entire internet, and in fact, implicitly across the entire world economy. It begins by quoting Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash. When Hero first saw this place 10 years ago, the monorail hadn't been written yet information technology. In order to get around, he and his buddies had to write car and motorcycle software. They had to take their software out and race it through the black desert of the electronic night. So begins this demiurge of a dissertation for a trust-to-trust -trust internet. It's uh, now no mere Elonious Musk monorail that he has in mind. This is a multi-rail sweeping through the entire foundations of the internet. And it's uh, an internet from distributed roots of trust and tr truth, time-stamped, and immutable. Now, this is an important distinction here. We've been talking about privacy a lot. And what the blockchain does is not only allow private transactions, but also allow you to document the truth of the transactions that you actually perform. It's, it's not merely cash uh, that uh, conceals identity, it's also a warrant for proof of your identity and your behavior so that no top-down system can manipulate the record of what you do and put you in jail. Uh, you know, we had a lot of privacy in the time of the Salem Rift witch trials. So, uh, and this new platform for the internet is based very economically on 44,334 lines of Python code that, it, that chiefly produces a new security model for the internet, a new security architecture for the internet. Security has completely broken down on this centralized internet that has emerged from our decentralized origins of the internet. I wrote a book a few years back, 1990, called Life After Television. 
and Life After Television declared that the computer of the future would be as portable as your watch, as personal as your wallet, it would recognize speech, it would navigate streets, it would collect your news and your mail. It just might not do windows, but it would do open doors. And uh, I also predicted that on the internet, no one would have to watch any advertising that they didn't want to see. Now that didn't come true because we had a Google coup. And Google has created a whole new internet based on advertising and on disintermediation of creators and endowment of corporate advertisers, in essence. And I think that overthrowing this coup of a segmented uh, f internet of fiefdoms rather than a distributed internet of personal power is really critical. And it's the, uh, the current internet is, has no security to speak of. It's a porous, perforated internet stack. And we need a block stack that, uh, that keeps information, data, ID at the bottom of the stack with the people who own the data and the identities. And that's a major breakthrough that uh, I believe that the block stack team has drilled in on better than uh, anyone else. So this new security model is crucial, but it's not only the internet that's been uh, debauched by this movement of centralization. Friedrich von Hayek, the great Austrian economist, said, the root and source of all financial evil is the government control of money. And a lot of people don't understand how radical is this insight and how true. But Today, we are undergoing a scandal of money. The biggest industry in the world economy by far is not food or clothing or either computers and communications. The biggest industry in the world by a factor of 70 or 100 is international currency trading. $5.1 trillion a day of currency trading conducted like an image from a Star Trek uh, film where uh, some of the people lived with accelerated powers. They could move and live at a pace far beyond anyone else, and thus they could move far into the future and dominate everyone. And this seemed like a wild fiction, but with the emergence of siren servers, supercomputers that conduct most of our uh, activities in the cloud, this kind of Star Trek uh, bifurcation of society has in fact happened, so that the creation of money is totally divorced by a factor of millions from the creation of value. And that divorce is the great divorce that afflicts our economies around the world and has created an era of stagnation despite the efflorescence of magnificent technologies. And I think that I think of key first step is uh, this uh, creation of a block stack to maintain the sovereignty of information and data. But beyond uh, the block stack, I think in general, we're in Berlin today, and uh, years ago I used to work for a president, some people may remember, and some people may abhor, named Ronald Reagan. And he said, tear down this wall. And I say, 
tear down all these walls that uh, uh, separate us from our computers, but uh, not from the malware that infests them. The, tear down the walls that uh, surround the big walled gardens of GAFA, Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon. Tear down these walls. Disperse the clouds. Uh, open the skies to sky computing, where everybody participates, rather than everybody is. So, and regain the internet again. Uh, not a winner-takes-all internet, but an internet in which we can all be winners again.